a shout out to these new subscribers. Hit that subscribe and notifications bell so you can have a shout out as well. All quiet on the Western Front. I've been wanting to make a review on this ever since I watched it, so better late than never I guess. Now I like war movies, especially ones that are of real wars. Now as much as I like these movie, these kind of movies, I haven't actually seen many of them in full due to, well, being allowed. But I have seen Dunkirk and All Quiet on the Western Front, the 2022 version, in full. Now World War II is quite a popular choice for period war movies since it happened more recently and has spread up spread out over more of Europe. World War I was more limited to France and Russia during its time. Now there are good World War I movies, 1917 for example, but most of these movies are told from the Allies side, which makes sense since they won, but it's nice to have one that tells from the Germans' point of view. Personally, I think it gives a more powerful message, especially when four years of fighting basically mean nothing to the individual on the front line. Now it is also nice to watch a movie that isn't bombarding us with the woke bullshit every 5 seconds to satisfy like 0.1% of the audience. Also quick word of advice, watch it in German with subtitles, trust me it's way better. Now the movie is centred around the young man named Paul and some of his friends who have joined the troops to become part of the greatest generation to fight for all the people of Germany. All the people in the room cheer like how the last batch did before they were sent off. They all go to get their uniforms, little knowing that they're all from dead soldiers, repurposed and repatched up. Paul is quickly silenced when he asks about a name tag that was still on. Their excitement is quickly cut off when they reach the front lines, all of them is all of them quickly finding out about the harsh reality of the trenches. And from there all goes to hell for Paul, as his friends pointlessly die before him. He turns from a young man with a future, to a mere shell that is trapped in a war he can't escape from. And in the last minutes of the war, along with many others, are forced to do a final charge of defiance, which ends up in him dying alone. It was definitely a tragic movie where everyone loses, even more so when told from the German side. There is almost no heroicness other than fighting when told to, or charging when told to. At first I thought the scene changes between the troops and the leaders were quite jarring, but I've actually come to like them because they are good comparisons of the lives of people living in luxury, far from the front lines, compared with the troops under fire. Fighting a war for them is like playing chess, where it doesn't matter how many pieces are sacrificed as long as the match is won. On the other hand, the soldiers on the ground are faced with a war that has never been seen on this scale before. Troops rejoice when they hear an armistice had been signed, not even bothering that their country had lost. All of their joy is shattered, as they are forced into a pointless raid of defiance onto the enemy, anyone that refuses is shot. Throughout the film, Paul and his friends are faced with the brutal combats of World War I. I've studied tanks of World War I, and statistically, the Saint Chamond tanks were poorly designed and quite useless. They will break down a lot and they just generally weren't as good as the other tanks of the time. Even with that being said, they are still deadly war machines in a time where anti-tank weapons weren't even common. So it weren't common. Flamethrowers and brutal melee combat unflinchingly shown in their full terror, only adding to their hell. The film as a whole portrayed life in a trench very well, with great detail and interest being put into the props that were all real by the way. Throughout the film they used very little VFX and mainly using it for adding extra troops or large high up scenes and some of the near explosives. And the cast performed really well, with superb acting. Not at one point did I feel like the acting was fake or forced, and you really don't have to be a genius to tell when a movie has had time and effort put into it, compared to one that is rushed and, well, given no thoughts. I'm looking at you, Disney. One little problem I did have was the flamethrowers. They weren't entirely how World War I flamethrowers worked, and they looked just a little bit fake, but I'm being overly picky because this film did have a, a slightly tighter budget to what it, well, was. The action and cinematography was breathtaking and really captured the horror of war in its fullest. The pacing was well performed and was gripped the whole time. My uncle said it was too slow for him when I asked him what he thought about it. Let's just say his house isn't around anymore. Honestly, if you don't like blood, I don't see how you can not like this movie. But hey, that's my opinion on this movie and I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. New subscribers will get a shout out in the beginning of the video. And I would love if you go check out the review on Warly. Well, 
Until next time, and cut.